and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where today I'm going to take you through my solve of uh, Friday's diabolical Sudoku, uh, which appeared in the Daily Telegraph. This is um, uh, normally a very, very difficult puzzle, um, and this was no exception, but it did have a very nice piece of logic towards the end, um, which I wanted to cover in the video. Um, but to be honest, it, was, it took me a while to find it, so rather than doing a video that's sort of 30 minutes long, I thought I would try and reproduce um, uh, my solve as sort of accurately as possible, but talking you through it rather more quickly than I uh, than I actually went in practice, um, just so that we uh, we can get to the interesting part um, a bit more swiftly. So you can see this nine here, this nine here, this forces a nine into this cell. Let's put that in. I'll make the pencil marks as I go, just to sake of good order, 9-9 nine, nine here, um, what was the next number I found? I think you can see we've got to place a 5 in one of these two positions, this 5 here means there's a 5 in there, that square, that gives us a 5 in this square, um, there's a 9 here, or a 9 in one of those two squares, and from memory, it was around this point, this has to be a one, but um, that I started to get stuck and I started to look at the rows and columns where I had already got a lot of numbers in. Um, and if you take a look at row one here, you can you can see that these two squares here can only be a 2, 3 and a 4. And interestingly enough, when I was doing the same thing on row 3, I found this square here is very restricted as well. This, this square, in fact, can only be a 2, 3 and a 4 as well. So we have this triple in this 3 by 3 blocks on the number three, 2, 3 and 4. That interacts with this 3 pencil mark here. We could actually limit that one a bit more. But effectively, these 3 squares can only be 2, 3 and 4. And that then I think gave me a couple of other numbers. If I remember rightly, this square here is very restricted now. It can't be a 1, it can't be a 2, 3, 4 for the reasons we've just mentioned. It can't be a 5, can't be a 6, can't be a 7, can't be a 9. So this square here had to be an 8. Um, and then this square here, I think this is also very restricted. It can't be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 8 or 9 now, so that square is a 7. Um, pencil marked a couple of 7s over here. You can see now this is a naked single. Um, the only number that will fit in this square I think is a 2. Uh, so let's write that in. 2, get rid of the pencil mark 2 there. Um, this 2 here forces a 2 into one of these three squares in column 9, and therefore there has to be 2 in one of these two squares in this bottom 3 by 3 block and we have a 2 here already so we can actually place a 2 there as well. Pencil mark 2 is over this side. Um, and now the next thing that's really quite interesting to note is we can do a similar trick with the 2, 3, 4 here using the 4 and the 8 that we have in row 7. So this 4 and 8, if we shuffle them across and look at the effect they have on this 3 by 3 block you can see that although we don't have any 4s and 8s in columns 1, 2 and 3, the fact that we can't place a 4 or an 8 in either of these two squares forces the 4 and the 8s eight, down like that. So we can move the 8 there, but we have a 4, 7, 8 triple down here as well, which allows us to conclude these two squares must be a 1 and a 6. Um, now, I'm not saying that was overwhelmingly useful, at this point, but it allowed me to place six pencil marks here and six pencil marks into those two squares like that. Um, and from here, one of the things that we first need to notice, and, and this is very common with these um, uh, diabolical Sudokus, is how often the Y-wing technique is necessary. So what I'm going to start doing now is I'm going to populate the grid with some of the squares that I found were relatively restricted as a result of all the searching I had to do. So I remember this square here 
I think I concluded that could only be a 1 or a 7. Um, if we look now at this square, because we have a 1, 6 pair in row row 7, this has to be a 2, 3, 7 or 9. But you can see we already have a 7 here, and we already have 3 pencil marks here. So in fact, this square could only be a 2 or a 9, and that immediately uh, sort of set my spider senses tingling. So I could see the 2, 4 here and the 2, 9 here. So I wanted to check whether or not there were any cells that would be candidates for a Y-wing in this 3x3 three three block. Now, if we look at this square, you can see, although on the face of it it might look, not look very restricted, it actually is quite restricted because we have a 1, a 2, and a 5, 7, 8, and in fact a 3 in the column because the 3 is locked into one of these two cells up here. So this square here, I think I'm right in saying, can only be a 4 or a 9 because we have these 6 pencil marks here as well. So there we have the classic Y-wing on, on 2, 4, and 9. Uh, Y-wing, sometimes it's better to describe it as a bent triple because you can see with the two numbers 2, 4, and 9, if they were all in the same column, we'd immediately uh, fixate upon them. We'd understand that that limited um, those three squares to the numbers 2, 4, and 9, and therefore we could eliminate 2, 4, and 9 wherever else they appeared in the column. Now, with a Y-wing, you can't quite do that, but you can ask yourself the important question. OK, what happens if I take this central cell of the Y-wing and I make it one of the options? So if this is a 2, you can see this square here becomes a 4. And if this is, on the other hand, a 9, this square here becomes a 4. So we can now say that any square in the grid that can see both this square and this square cannot contain a 4. So one obvious candidate there is this one. Um, but in fact, if we study this 3x3 uh, this three three, uh, block a bit harder, we find this square here is also quite interesting because until we found the Y-wing, this could have been a 1, 4, 6, or a 7. Um, and now, because it can't be a 4 anymore, it can only be 1, 6. In fact, 1 or 6. It can't be a 7 because of this 7 here. So this is a 1 or a 6. And this is where we find something really rather beautiful. So once I found this 1, 6 pair, I was immediately then, OK, why is that important? Why have they, why have they set up this Y-wing to eliminate the 1? the 4 in this square. And I started studying the central column of the grid quite hard. If we look at this, uh, let's look at these two squares in particular. You can see we need to place the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 6 here. So this is a 2, 3, and a 6 because of this 1 here. And this square here, I think, could be 1, 2, 3, or 6. Um, couldn't eliminate the 1 immediately. Um, but then, all of a sudden, I notice this one here and this one here. Now that means we can actually place ones into these into these two cells here. So that gave me a two, three, six there as well. So I've now got one six and then two, three, six along the column. Now if we look at this square here, this is another very restricted square. We have a one, two, four, and six option except we also have a 4 and 6 here, so this can only be a 1 or a 2. And this is the final, I suppose, really difficult stage in the puzzle, but also perhaps the most beautiful step. So what I'd encourage you to do now is to pause the video and have a look at those, um, those four cells that we've just most recently talked about. So this square, this square, this square, and this square and see if you can see something interesting about the pattern between them. Now, I'll talk you through it now. The, the critical thing to note firstly is as, as the Y-wing was sort of a bent triple, what we have here is a bent quadruple, and hence the name given to this sort of arrangement, which is a W X Y Z wing. Uh, so four unknowns and four different cells not in the same row or column, but just slightly 
round the corner. And one of the things we can ask ourselves here, which is it's a different form of question, but it's really quite nice, is is it possible that both this square and this square don't contain one? So is it possible for this to be the correct configuration? And you can see if if there's neither a one here nor a one here, this square has to be a six and this square has to be a two. So we'd be able to eliminate the two and the six from this, these two squares. And we'd be left with a three uh, as the only candidate for both of these squares, which is clearly not possible. So in fact, we know that at least one of this square and this square must contain a one. And once you appreciate that, Look at the effect that has on this square here. This can no longer contain a 1 because we know there'll either be a 1 here or a 1 here or perhaps a 1 in both of those squares but there definitely won't be able to be a 1 here. Now this square can only be a 1 or a 7 so once we eliminate the 1 as an option it becomes a 7 and from there the puzzle utterly collapses. <laughs> and, uh, you, know, you can see immediately over here uh, we're able to place a 4, an 8 and a 7 um, and in fact, it, it just flows from there. There's an eight here, and um, it takes about a minute and a half to finish the puzzle from this point forward. So I wanted to share that with you. I'm not in any way claiming that that was a, a 10 minute solve for me today. Um, in order to find that logical method, it probably took me 30 minutes. So um, uh, a lot slower than if I'd been doing it in a competition situation because I would have bifurcated, I would have um, I'd have found the easy squares and then picked a square and guessed and switched to pencil and gone uh, gone along that route. But what we try and do in these videos, especially on the harder harder Sudokus, is to find and show you a logical way of progressing. Um, and yeah, this is quite a nice one today. So thank you for watching. Uh, please do subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. We really appreciate that. And we'll see you again soon on Cracking the Cryptic.